Hello and welcome back to Scratch Your Farm Lord. So today's week 25, season 1 of the farm. So an awful lot is going on. So let's get into it. So to start off with, Matt's just bringing over the John Deere 3400 Telehander with a bale spike. Just give it a quick reset before we go. That's ready and here's ready to stack bales. And then we got everything in the sheds in there. And then we've got Connors and Jack Sandy over Matt's pickup. And then we've got the forklift and the grab and every the muck scrape and everything in there. And we've got the hay bales and the silage pit. And over here we've got Mick, he's brought down his Case International 745S, a really nice tractor. And then he's obviously going to be doing our baling for us, well square baling, because it's our baler. But we don't have enough um, tractors to go around um, instead of paying someone else to come and do it. We thought, well, we can give Mick a bit of work. It should be about match right for the tractor, the baler. And then we picked up this cheapish bale sled. It's not the best, but it will work, and that's all that really matters. We had to replace some wheel bearings, as you can see. Someone's had a, well, made a bit of a dodge, dodge job of it. But anyway, um, we've placed the wheel bearings in them. It, they need to come off it, but we didn't have the time, so we just did the wheel bearings, and then that will work. And then Mick and Richard are just putting some baler twine in it, ready. And then over here we've got all the trailers and everything lined up. The Kubota and all the hay, well not hay, straw stuff hasn't gone out yet. Because we've been cutting, but we haven't been baling, because we need to wait for it to dry out a bit before we can bale. We could go straight away, but because we're limited on kit, because it's a, not the biggest farm, and we don't want to spend out lots of money on contractors that we aren't going to make back. So we're just going to bail after. So once we finish cutting, we'll start baling, because we've got a week and a bit of dryness, and then it gets wet, so we've got to be quick about it. So a lot of long nights and early mornings coming up. But anyway, we've got the Kubota with the Fat 8 Grab, and all the hydraulic lines are hooked up to it. And then we've got the case with the clean round baler. All the silage kit is coming out very, very soon. The second cut will literally be baling and then second cut straight away. There'll probably be some chopping going on while we're finishing off baling. And then we've got the bale wrapper and the turner. Then we've got, we still haven't named him, so the comments, YouTube still hasn't got back to me and it's been a right pain. So basically from now on all my videos have to be premieres to get the comments to work. So the guy that was in this tractor still haven't hasn't been named, so if you want your name to be used, put that in the comments. And then obviously he he's gone off, but when we start bathing he'll be back to help out. You've got the cedar and the PTO and everything in there. And we've got the top off Jack Slander over. And then the log splitter and everything in there. Then we got the water shop, but getting a bit of Moss going on that now, that will be going out to a field soon, and then the chain hurries under that. And then we've got everything along here. And then we've got the feed barriers, the last of our straw. The straw's not going in here, this is lamb and sheds. Because we've still got some concrete to finish, and the shed doesn't have electrics or water yet, so that still needs to be done. And then we've got the old Ford 5000 in there, everything down there. And then the corner muck spreader and the Primex tanker sitting in there. We're thinking of getting another yard just to store half this kit or graveling this field that we don't really want to do. But anyway, and we've got the trailer still sitting there, we're not sure what to do with that. And then the roller and the firewood, which will be cut up. It's, we wanted to have it cut by now, but we're so busy, it just hasn't happened and won't happen. So we'll wait a bit for that. And then we've got everything down here in all these fields. And then we've had a bit of an issue here. So while we were so busy, we went around this field spraying off the very edges and we left the gate open because we're just so busy with everything. Oh, we thought, oh, we'll shut that tomorrow on the way to cut in. And then overnight, someone came and fried it with a ton of brick rubble and there's an odd bag of cement on it as well. So that's annoying, right pain. We need to get in here for second cut and we don't have the time to move it right now. So we still, we've got to sort that out, but now it will just have to say, stay. And then there is an entrance the other end of the field back there some ways, but this is the easier one and quicker one to get to. 
so we're going to have to move that out of the way even if we just push it in a bit then it's just it's just annoying having people do this I mean it's bad enough when you have it on the side of the road but then to go and put all the effort into backing it into the gateway in the middle of the nowhere and then bearing mind we need to get in the gateway is just the right pain and then over here we've got this gate and then this is bushing up nicely around there and then we've got down here in this field and then this field is going to be second cut hay as well and as you can see there's a bit of well the track's just been very well used recently so there's a bit of silage falling off and one of the tracks is where it was stuck on the cab so down at the big grass field, as you can see, it's very, very close to second cut. We could be chopping now, but we're just too busy at the moment. So it'll probably be a very, very thick second cut, but we, because we're leaving it a bit late, we might not get third cut in, but we don't really need it, but it does help financially a good bit. And then the JCB 8060 is out, that's out on higher. They didn't want everything, all the attachments with it. It's only got a few. It's got the main bucket, and then the other bucket and all it's doing is digging out some stumps and then it's cheaper to hire it out with less buckets and that's purely because we charge a bit it's not much it's only like a five or more per bucket but because we do get wear on the bushings that does sort of affect so we don't want someone in total charge paying for a trenching bucket where when they're not doing any trenching. So that's why we do it like that. And then we've got everything in there. There's Landrover's Land Rover's still ready to go. We've got the John Deere 6820 on the Kano loader, ready to go. And then we've got the Anmar parts up, all the attachments down there. We're probably gonna put a lean to on there somewhere, only a very small one. We're possibly thinking of putting a second building up just to, because we're getting a lot of kit now, which is a good thing, but the yard's a bit small for it and we don't want to go into that field well we could do but we'd rather not and then there's still no pigs because or anything so we might put sheep out there for a while or it might go back to pigs again and then over here there's a lot going on so we've got Aaron on the class cock tiger just doing the steep bit of the bank then he's just emptying into Jack in the 3650 and then we've got Noah in the geyser just come to bring some water and everything to everyone and then Ian's just getting out to go over to speak to him uh, in the Ford with the crampy grain trailer and then so they're all harvesting there so down at the house a lot is going on the chickens are happy and then we've got the contractors in the Massey 7278 combine they've cut a good bit of the field but they've got a hell of a lot more to go so this field's quite flat, so it'll be done in round bales, where this field here, down here on the bank side, it's very steep, which is why we're using the cock tiger, and then the cock tiger will be going off to contracts very soon, and the rest of the field up this way will be done by the contractors with a bigger combine. And then, we've obviously, with part of the contract agree agreement, where you have to cart at least one trailer, uh, with grain, so as in one trailer backwards and forwards when the contracts are doing the rest so we he's just emptied and then Connor's is in the Massey and then he's just carting that away and then this one will be round bales and then this one will be small square because this one's more of a hill and they won't fly away or roll away as much up at mixed yards, not well stuff's going on but everything's been dropped to go and help with the harvest so he's got this very new Kubota KXO19-4 in on hire so it's not his he would quite like one but they're not the cheapest things and it's a very new one so you, you can see here he was dug the post hole there but um, the way he had to drop everything he didn't get time to pack it in around it because you can see the post is wonky where it's just sitting in the hole and then he's also got the bridge done so he's able to trap the digger over he normally would have borrowed one of our diggers but it's a bit, the main of it, well we don't have the mini anymore and the other one you could fit over the bridge It'd probably be a bit heavy to do that and also it's out on higher anyway so he's got his jeep over here because he drove his case down to the yard to the baler as you saw and he's got the firewood processor just dropped up off there he's going to be building quite a nice building, it's going to be quite a big one so it's going to be coming out to about here 
and going down to the back so it's going to be a workshop and storage but it's going to be a while in the making because he doesn't want to do it out of wood so like this one that we did for him before he came to this yard he's going to do it out of steel and brick and make it look really nice and good so it's going to take a while but eventually he'll get there he's got to get planning permission and everything for it first then obviously his jeep and then he's got the first crate of logs done and he will be just stacking the logs in there but for now he's just doing them in crates then he's got our cat skid steer still he doesn't have a machine yet to load the logs onto the processor which he is still going to get one eventually when he can afford it so he's got this and then there's a few linkages bits off his case tractor in the bucket and the pallet forks there and it's got the log grab on it and the log pile slowly but surely going down and he'll have to get another load in soon but it depends how much he gets cut up between now and somewhen because he's going to be quite busy for a while with us with the small square baling work but then he'll have well when the harvest stops and second cut's pretty much done he will have a lot of firewood to do ready for firewood season so that's pretty much it thanks for watching so remember obviously the comments will be working this time so remember to leave your name if you want it used for this guy because he will be doing a lot more work for us over the time anyway thanks for watching any questions you have leave in the comments see you again soon